starts with the fertilization and implantation of the embryo in the endometrium, which occurs about four to seven days after ovulation. This is the result of and also results in several changes in the endometrium and of these are the pre-ovulatory endometrium which is multilayered and which changes into a secretory endometrium which is hyperechoic. That hyperechogenicity continues to increase towards the center of the endometrium and the entire endometrium becomes hyperechoic in the midluteal phase beyond which it starts thickening up and implantation of the embryo then occurs which is seen as asymmetrical thickness of the endometrial leaps. Endometrial vascularity that has increased before the ovulation decreases until day 5 after ovulation and again increases in the mid-luteal phase. This is the need of physiology. Histological and embryological data suggest that relatively low partial pressure of oxygen environment may be necessary for successful implantation of the human blastocyst. In the mid-luteal phase, the corpus luteum shows a nice ring of color and this flow is a low resistance flow with an RI of less than 0.5 and a PSV of between 10 and 15 centimeters per second. And this tells the progesterone production from the corpus luteum is sufficient to support the pregnancy. Along with that, if you also see spiral artery flow in the inner layers of the endometrium, along with the low RI again of less than 0.52, with the uterine artery PI of less than 2.5, it again says that the environment in the endometrium is good enough to support the implanting embryo. If the conception has occurred, the resistance indices remain low for the rest of the cycle. But if it is a non-conception cycle, the resistance index in the corpus luteum as well as in the endometrium starts increasing after the mid-luteal phase. As I just mentioned, the subjective signs of the implantation can be seen in the uterus. There is asymmetrical thickening of the endometrium. There is asymmetrical hyperechogenicity of the endometrium in the same area, which is asymmetrically thick. And it is this part of the endometrium which also shows increased vascularity, a localized area, which is the site where the embryo is implanted. Though confirmation of the pregnancy is done by missed periods, positive urine pregnancy test and a positive beta-HCG, beta-human chorionic gonadotrophin in blood. Beta-HCG is considered to be a specific test for pregnancy, but it is found to be positive also in ectopic pregnancies and in lesions like this germinoma, choriocarcinoma and molar pregnancy also. That means you need ultrasound to confirm that it is an intrauterine pregnancy. Serum HCG level reaches 1500 million international units per ml at 10 to 14 days after conception and at this level intrauterine gestational sac must be seen by transvaginal ultrasound. And this is the surest sign of intrauterine pregnancy. Ultrasound is also done to evaluate the viability of the embryo, structural abnormalities in the embryo, chromosomal abnormalities, and associated abnormalities of the uterus and the adenexa. It also aids in the diagnosis of intrauterine hematomas with pregnancy, pregnancies of abnormal locations, as well as trophoblastic tumors which may be present with or without pregnancy. Rise in the corpus luteal flow resistance at any time after conception and before nine weeks of pregnancy can be an indication of a pregnancy at risk. And this correlates with the fact that in a failing pregnancy, the progesterone levels fall before the beta HCG falls. First trimester scan will be discussed in following order anatomy and growth pattern of the normal embryo and fetus, threats to pregnancy, abnormalities that can be detected in this period, pregnancy of abnormal locations, and pregnancies with abnormal uterus and adenexa. Though in this presentation, we will concentrate more on the growth pattern of the embryo, the threats to the pregnancy, and abnormalities that can be detected in this period. Starting with the anatomy. Four weeks of pregnancy is when the pregnancy is confirmed. 
the endometrium is thickened and there is decidual reaction which gives rise to hyperechogenicity of the endometrium. The gestational sac, if it is seen at that time, is just 2 millimeters. The walls of the gestational sac are hyperechoic than the myometrium and it abuts the endometrial cavity. If you put on a Doppler, you'll also see a parasac blood flow. The earliest color Doppler sign is the color comet sign, where the endometrium is asymmetrically thick and hyperechoic, as we know that is the area where the embryo is implanting. If you put on the color Doppler as early as just after the mid-luteal phase, you will see multiple vessels converging at a single point, and this is called a color comet sign. This is one of the first signs to tell us that the conception has occurred. Five weeks of pregnancy, you would see a gestational sac of about eight millimeters and you'll also see the yolk sac inside along with the fetal pole. And the neural tube starts developing as early as that in the form of the neural groove first. And it can be beautifully seen on that 3D picture as an elevation on the back of the fetus. The yolk sac development occurs in the first trimester, starts even earlier than the development of the embryo. It is in fact the first embryonic structure that appears in the gestational sac. The morphology of the yolk sac is not studied by most of the people, but there are a few studies which describe the morphology of the yolk sac as the pregnancy grows. And at six weeks, it appears like a smooth walled structure and gradually the surface starts folding and it gives a typical honeycomb appearance in the later pregnancy that is about eight to 10 weeks. Absence of a yolk sac is the sign of a blighted ovum. At six weeks, the cephalic and the caudal poles appear and the cardiac activity also appears. The embryo then gradually as it grows becomes C-shaped. Head is round and bulky as you can see here due to the developing forebrain and the omphalomesentric duct is approximately four times the crown rump length. You can see the head shape and the caudal and the cephalic poles beautifully in this 4D image rendered in the HD light. At six weeks, you can actually see that the embryo which was straight has started curving as you can see the growth of the pregnancy and this curvature is because of the head development chiefly. During this period of development, you can also see the development of the neural groove which was documented a week earlier and now it appears as a neural ridge as you can see in this figure. At seven weeks, the head is large and is bent over the trunk. You can see the rhombencephalon. The hand and the foot plates are formed. Amnion is visible as a faint round line around the embryo. The cerebral blood flow becomes evident. The chorion frondosum can be differentiated from the chorion leaf. It is Korean leaf which ultimately disappears and it is Korean frontosome from which the placenta ultimately develops. There is complete obliteration of the vital line duct which was seen earlier and if persistent it may lead to Meckel's diverticulum in the later life. At 8 weeks the embryo which had curved at 6 weeks now again becomes straight. There is a cartilaginous skeleton which is formed. There is expansion of the lateral third and the midbrain ventricles leading to lifting of the head from the anterior flexion. This brings the midbrain at the vertex level and the cephalic pole is showing the fourth ventricle. It is in the eighth week that you will also see the physiological umbilical hernia that develops towards the end of this week. The limb birds, they start appearing as you can see in that 4D picture beautifully. The cord insertion is then seen and the embryonic circulation is completely established as seen in the second clip. The chorionic villi, they start branching as early as five weeks of gestation and covers the whole gestational sac at eight weeks. At nine weeks, the villi proliferate towards the decidua basalis and forms a chorion frontosum. And this is the first phase of placentation.
The stalk of the yolk sac can be followed to the embryonic abdomen as in the form of midgut as the vitalin duct. At 9 weeks, the neck and the coccyx prominence is clearly visible as you can see in that 4D clip. The elbows and the knees are formed. Again, you can see that in the rendered image on the 4D clip. You can see the fingers at the end of 9 weeks. The facial details are also appreciated at this time and the development of the liver and the bowel can be documented.